Okay, uh, so good morning. Today our lecture will be dedicated uh, to amputations and disarticulations of the limbs. <clears throat> So, first of all, uh, we need to understand what's the difference. Amputation is a surgical removal of a limb or its part by dividing through one or more bones. So, we, we saw bones into two parts and thus we uh, perform an amputation. Disarticulation uh, is a case of amputation as well, but it is a surgical removal of the whole limb or its part between articular surfaces. So the dissection, the division of the limb goes through the articular surfaces. So if we are talking about the lower limbs, for example, we can perform transfemoral or transtibial amputation, but if dissection passes through the articular cavity of the hip joint, it will be hip disarticulation or in the knee joint, it is knee disarticulation, and uh, in the foot, it can be amputation if we do not pass through the articular, cav uh, articular um, cavity of the joint, or it can be disarticulation as well. I will talk about all of them today. Uh, so first, yes, um, it is one of the most ancient surgical procedures and in the past, limb was amputated without anesthesia even, because just there was not an anesthesia. And a very common complication of amputation, um, it was a pain shock. And uh, because there was not a special, there were not special instruments to provide hemostasis, and there were not antibiotics, uh, the stump, like the residual limb, that part that, uh, state it is stump. The stump was crushed or dipped in boiling oil to obtain hemostasis. Like it is one of physical methods of hemostasis. Yes, we were talking about it at the previous classes that um, if we treat vessels with something hot, then they um, like hot saline solution, for example, they become narrow and uh, it provides hemostasis. So Hippocrates was first to use ligatures on the vessels to stop bleeding. And in uh, 1529, French surgeon Ambroise Paré suggested to use clamps for hemostasis. And he also designed sophisticated prostasis. In 1674, French military surgeon Etienne Marel introduced tourniquet. And in 1867, British surgeon uh, Lord Joseph Lister introduced a sepsis. Well, I think this, uh, this you know, because jo Joseph Lister introduced a sepsis not only for the amputation, but for the whole surgery. So still, unfortunately, it is a very common procedure. And in average, it is performed at the age of 50 to 75. Uh, in young age, it's mainly due to the traumatic reason. And in 75% cases, it is performed in males and only in 25% in females. Well, it is due to the uh, lifestyle. We all know that men are not as careful as women are. Uh, and regarding uh, limbs, which are involved into the amputations, in 85% of cases, it is performed on the lower limbs, and in 15% of cases, on the upper limbs. Uh, about indications, uh, I will tell you two versions of indications, like classic way how we study it in Russian books, and another way which I found in some English literature. So, but anyway, sense is the same, but mm, let's discuss it. So, absolute indication of the uh, for the amputation, it is traumatic avulsion of the limb. Though actually it can be under debate because nowadays even traumatic avulsion of the limb can be restored if there are vessels and nerves which can be stitched. And such cases, they happen and we know about them, yes. Then gangrene of the limb. Uh, 
Uh, etiology of gangrene can be different. It can be burn, electrotrauma, enderteritis, frostbite, embolism, anaerobic infection, diabetic angiopathy. So, but it must be like severe gangrene of the limb and non-curable, yes? Uh, one more indication if there is triad of limb injury if there are all of these three um, facts like there is an injury of two-thirds of soft tissues and there is injury and crushing of large neurovascular bundles in this region and there is injury of bones if all three facts are present if there is a triad of limb injury it is an absolute indication for amputation if at least one of them is absent then we should think, yes, we should think. So what you have to understand that amputation is a last call surgery. Yes, it is like final choice. If there is at least a small hope to preserve a limb, we should do everything to do it. Uh, and if there's nothing more, like we have nothing to do, then yes, we have to perform amputation. So relative indications uh, are sepsis, chronic osteomyelitis, innate deformities of the limbs, malignant tumors, long-existing non-curable trophic ulcers, uh, traumas with injuries of bone and, uh, and two-thirds of soft tissues, but neurovascular bundle is preserved. So if neurovascular bundle is preserved, it is just relative indication for amputation. In case of relative indications, amputation is performed if trauma or disease is life-threatening. So it should be decided there must be a concilium of doctors. Yes, many doctors come and if all of them decide that amputation is indicated, only in this case it will be performed. Uh, there are contraindications for amputations and disarticulations. Uh, the only one uh, actually it is traumatic shock. Like if we see that we need to perform an amputation but patient is in a traumatic shock then we have to wait and first cure this condition uh, but time for shock treatment shouldn't exceed four hours and for children relative indications for amputations uh, should be limited due to great rehabilitation opportunities mm -hmm. <clears throat> So in English literature, uh, indications for amputations, they are um, pointed as 3D, 3D. 1D, it is dead limb, dead limb that is uh, impossible to save, to preserve. Yes, it is severe trauma, peripheral vascular disease, uh, burns, and frostbite. Uh, the second D, it is dangerous limb. When, um, if we do not remove this limb, it will, like, condition will become life-threatening. So it is crush injury, then malignancy, uh, lateral sepsis, and forgotten tourniquet. So we discussed it at our practical classes. How long uh, can we apply tourniquet on the limb? And we said that it shouldn't exceed two hours. And if you forgot it for more than six hours, then it is a um, direct indication for amputation. Mm, because toxins, yes, uh, like yes, yeah, this uh, that cells they will be distributed all over the body and it will cause sepsis finally. And the third D it is damn nuisance, a gross deformity, recurrent sepsis, uh, loss of function. So when limb does not perform its functions, but it just disturbs, like it is, um, like it dis. Uh, without the limb, it will be better than with it. Then we have also to perform an amputation. And the only absolute indication for amputation, and here I more agree actually with English textbooks with, than with Russian ones, it is irreversible ischemia. If we can do nothing to restore blood supply in the distal part of the limb, in this case, we perform amputation. Only in this case. So aim of amputation is prevention of infection spread and metabolism products from lesion focus and thus saving patient's life. And the second aim, it is creation of efficient stump that is appropriate for prosthetics. It is also very important. So when we perform amputation, we have to keep in mind that finally it should feed the prosthesis. Nowadays, it's very important. So 
there are several classifications of amputations, uh, time-based classification. Uh, all the amputations are divided into primary, uh, which are performed at the time of primary surgical treatment, so during the first 24 hours. And it is, mm, yes, 24 hours. Then there is secondary amputation that is performed within seven to eight days. So on the background of inflammation, or in the complication of the cause of the wound process, wound healing process, which threatens the life of the patient. So a secondary amputation is performed when during primary surgical treatment, it was first decided that we can preserve the limb. But healing process uh, didn't go that course, which we supposed it will go. And that's why doctors decided that amputation is indicated. Late amputation is performed with severe non-treatable osteomyelitis, amyloidosis threatening parenchymal organs, and with multiple ankylosis in a vicious position, making the limb useless. In case of gross deformity of the limb, we also perform late amputations. Um, in, case of, no, in case of some chronic diseases, which finally cause uh, indications for an amputation. So primary and secondary amputations are performed in case of trauma. And late amputations are performed in case of complicated chronic diseases. Reamputation is a repeated amputation when the results of the first surgery are unsatisfactory. And we'll talk about it as well, in which cases uh, reamputations are indicated. So there is a classification according to the method of dissection of soft tissues. So there are circular methods, uh, one step or guillotine amputation, two step, we'll discuss it, three step that was invented by famous Russian surgeon Nikolai Ivanovich Pirogov. And there are flap methods. Here you can see them, single flap, when, yes, when there is only one flap and it covers the whole stump, and double flap when Two flaps are formed from both sides of the stump. Uh, usually one of them is longer, another is shorter, and they also together cover the stump. So um, what are the main stages of amputation? First, it is application of tourniquet and anesthesia. Certainly we have to apply the tourniquet, except some cases when application of, tour of tourniquet is contraindicated uh, to decrease blood loss during operation, yes, to decrease intraoperational blood loss. Then, a dissection of skin, subcutaneous tissue and proper fascia, a dissection of muscles, ligation with stitching of the main vessels, uh, processing and intersection of, of nerve trunks, treatment of periosteum, dissection of the bone, and finally, formation of stump. So there are seven main stages of amputation, and we will discuss all of them uh, today. So yes, Two contraindications for amputation, uh, or oh, sorry, application of tourniquet. Gas gangrene, because tissue ischemia promotes the activation of anaerobic bacteria, and after removal of tourniquet, it is possible to rapidly introduce toxins into the bloodstream. And then sclerotic vascular lesions, because under the effect of the tourniquet, there is a mechanical damage to the arteries and their thrombosis with the development of ischemia uh, in the distal part of stump. How to choose uh, the level of amputation? A level of amputation, it is the level of bone, bone sewing. And according to the principle of Nikolai Ivanovich Pirogov, we have to amputate as low as possible. So we have to preserve as much tissues as it is possible. Uh, but nevertheless, we should remember that amputation of extremities should be performed within healthy tissues as actually any surgery, yes. Um, uh, but nowadays, we also should consider prosthetics, yes. So a level of amputation also uh, needs to be suitable for the prosthetics. So nowadays, there are two requirements, yes, for choosing the level of amputation. So let's start with circular amputations. Advantage of such type of amputation that uh, amputation of the limb is performed at a lower level 
with the formation of a longer stump because when we later will see uh, um, regarding flap amputation uh, sewing of bone will be performed upper and skin is separated from the underlying tissues at a smaller length and the better blood supply is preserved these are advantages disadvantages uh, of such type of amputations that is that the scar is located on the distal part of stump and it is constantly in contact with the prosthesis and certainly friction occurs and maybe some infections of the wound or maybe um, like rupture of the wound even yes that that can uh, cause re a second uh, repeated surgery so this is um, a disadvantage so circular amputations they are divided into one step or guillotine here you can do it it's like when we dissect a limb by one incision just we dissect all the tissues at the same level then there is two-step amputation when we dissect soft tissues at one level and uh, bone at the other level and three-step amputation we will discuss it right now how exactly they are conducted so guillotine amputation as i have already told you uh, it is intersection of soft tissues and bone sewing at the same level the main advantage of this method that it is simple and fast and it can be applied in a case of a massive admission of patients with severe traumas and anaerobic infection when there are many patients and not so many doctors and uh, usually at the battlefield it uh, was used it's not used nowadays so often but it was used one more plus one more advantage is that it can be performed without anesthesia and there is a high chance that patient will survive after such a great pain just because it is single moment it doesn't last long this pain yes uh, disadvantages of such type of amputation it is formation of conical stump that requires re-amputation uh, why that it doesn't happen uh, so because we dissect all the tissues at the same level but all the tissues have different contractility yes different elasticity like bone does not contract at all but muscles and skin it contracts and then during healing we get such conical stump and we cannot even cover the bone and so this stump is not suitable for the prosthetics and it will always require re-amputation two-step amputation it is amputation in which muscles and bone are crossed in different planes so first we dissect skin and subcutaneous fatty tissue uh, and fascia then we pull skin like we pull proximal um, end of the skin, proximal margin of the dissected skin proximally maxim, maximum how we can pull it and we dissect muscles at that level and then we wait for the muscles to contract actually we don't need to wait long they contract very fast and we decide bone at the level of contracted muscle so this is two-step amputation but great russian surgeon um, the founder of topographic anatomy nikolai ivanovich pirogov he invented another method that is three-step amputation uh, that um, creates even more suitable stamp for for the patient uh, so advantages that it is easy to apply and disadvantages it's not economical because like uh, when we compare at the end of surgery the level where we dissected the skin and the level where we dissect finally a bone there will be a very long distance so we do not save tissues at all and scar is also located on the distal surface like in all the circular amputations so again in three step we um, separately dissect superficial and deep muscles certainly this type of amputation is applicable only in those parts of the limbs where muscles are divided into the layers yes like we can say this is leg or forearm because in the side and in the upper arm muscles are arranged into one layer only so we dissect skin subcutaneous tissue and fascia first 
then superficial muscles we dissect at the level of the contracted skin just without pulling yes then we pull skin proximally and deep muscles we dissect at the level of pulled skin and bone we dissect at the level of contracted muscles so that is three-step amputation uh, flap amputations as i have told you the main advantage of them is that if we are making a flap it means that in one side from the one side um, skin will be longer than from the other side and then skin suture will be located not on the distal part of the stem but somewhere on the side this is the main advantage uh, the suture does not contact with the prosthetics it is not on the support surface and it is easier to heal and uh, that is the main advantage so uh, flap amputations are divided into single flap and double flap single flap amputations are amputations in which one flap has a length equal to the diameter of the limb and double flap amputations are those in which two flaps along the length make up the total diameter of the limb while one of the flaps is usually longer and the other is shorter why is it so because if both flaps will be equal then again suture will be located um, on the distal surface of the limb yes and we don't need it mm -hmm. so here you can see single flap amputation just an, as an example for you to understand yes it's clear and so this is double flap amputation if we have time we will try to watch the video of this amputation today so you see that anterior flap is longer than the posterior and so that's how we remove this is double flap amputation certainly uh, we do not um, uh, when we make up this flap certainly we use special formulae to calculate what length a flap should have yes and we calculated according to this formula c the circumference yes equal to 2 pr or pd you know this is actually geometric formula which you studied at your geometry classes formula of cir circumference yes and to calculate flap lengths you take a diameter of the limb in that particular region of amputation which you measure using this formula and also you add you sum it with contractility of tissues contractility of tissues is calculated as c circumference uh, that is divided onto six like it is conditional but we use it nowadays so d plus k where d is diameter of the limb and k it is contractility of the skin we have to consider it that is how we calculate the length of the flap if we take two flaps that this number we just divide into two not equally but usually one flap um, takes two thirds of this number and the shorter flap takes one third of this number so that's how you can see it you see yes longer flap two thirds and shorter flap one third uh, the other classification depending on the structure of the covering flap it can be cutaneous um, it's actually not very good when we cover the flap only with skin because in this case skin does not have a very good blood supply and it can have a, be necrotized with the time and skin is thin and it is not suitable for the prosthetics so the other it is fascia cutaneous or fascia plastic when we cover the bone stump not only with skin but also with subcutaneous tissue and fascia then myoplastic when we take also muscle to cover the bone stump and tender plastic so tender plastic when we take tendon it's not always it is actually, actually a perfect amputation when we can cover a bone stump with tendon but it is possible only when we amputate in a distal part of the part of the limb i mean in the distal part of the thigh or in the distal part of the leg of the forearm because you know that muscles start with muscular bellies and tendons start usually only in the distal part of this um, parts 
of the limb. Yes, that's why then the plastic amputations are possible only in this case. And osteoplastic, when we cover the bone stump with another bone and we create by this way very suitable stump, sometimes uh, this in case of this osteoplastic amputations, even prosthesis is not required, oh, just for aesthetic reasons it is used. And depending on the method of periosteum processing, it can be aperiosteal, subperiosteal, and transperiosteal. We will uh, discuss or describe all of them. So, okay, that's it. So, how to process periosteum? Uh, the first is transperiosteal, when bone and periosteum are dissected at the same level. Well, it is the easiest, and uh, it is usually used in case of guillotine amputation, because just we dissect everything at the same level, including periosteum. Yes? Uh, Subperiosteal method was invented by Walter in 1910. In this case, periosteum is dissected first and retracted two centimeters proximally. And then bone is dissected without periosteum at this level two centimeters proximally from the dissection from the level of dissection of periosteum. And it is bone stump is covered by an excessive periosteal tissue. This method is applied uh, in children in pediatrics because we remember that periosteum provides uh, growth of the bone into the weeds, yes, and that's why in children we have to preserve as much periosteum as we can. In adult people, especially in elder people, we try to use a periosteal method of amputation that was invented by Bange in 1901. In this case, bone is dissected five millimeters below level of periosteum dissection to avoid its damage. Uh, a method is applied in elder people. So again, we first dissect periosteum and we retract it distally in this case, like distal, like distal margin is retracted even more distally and then we dissect the bone. Why do we do it? In this case, we cannot cover bone stump with periosteum. So yes, we impair blood supply partially and the uh, growth of the bone, but in elder people it's not so much important. Yes, it's actually not important at all. But if we do not do like that, then we cause formation of um, osteophytes. We cause um, osteophytosis. It is bone spurs. Um, they are painful, like outgrowths of bony tissue because any damage of periosteum, it causes its proliferation. Yes, and in elder people, it is not desirable. Uh, yes, how to treat nerves during amputation? Actually, not only nerves, now we will discuss everything, how to treat nerves and vessels uh, and all the other structures. So nerves uh, should be transected by safety razor blade, actually we have already talked about it uh, in the lecture regarding about nerves, yes, four to six centimeters proximally to the level of soft tissue dissection to avoid formation of terminal neuroma and its involvement into the scar. So four to six centimeters proximally. We know that after the dissection of nerves, traumatic neuroma or amputation neuroma is formed. It's nearly unavoidable. If growth cone has nowhere to grow, it will form neuroma. But it will be even more painful if this neuroma will be involved into the scar and there will be a constant compression of neuroma and thus constant irritation of pain receptors, yes, at the, at the end of the neurons. That's why we should dissect the nerves above, proximally. Mm -hmm. mm. So even in this case, we can deal with phantom pain. What is it we'll uh, discuss at our practical classes? Oh, sorry. So ligation of large nerves can be performed when a large vessel is an associated vessel is present, like in case of median nerve, in case of sciatic nerve, we usually perform its ligation because near to it there is a vessel, yes, and to prevent blood bleeding, 
oui, l'Aiguille du Nord. Um, how to treat vessels during amputation? So, the large arteries and veins are dissected and separately ligated. It prevents the development of arterial venous fistulas and aneurysms. Yes, if we ligate them together, there is a high blood pressure that comes to this blind end of the vessel and it tries to find the further way. And with the time, walls between arteries and veins, they will be, it will be damaged, and fistula, like another communication between artery and vein, will be created. To avoid it, arteries and veins should be ligated separately. Large vessels must be stitched to avoid slipping of the ligature. Yes, we uh, know it. So bones. During amputation of a limb part, where there are two or more bones, it is recommended to dissect them together at the same level. The exception is the leg bones, where the fibula should be sewn a bit higher than the tibia. Bony prominences around these articulations are removed with a saw and filed smooth. For adult people, a periosteal method of, of uh, periosteum processing is used as fragments of periosteum at the end of the bones may form osteophytes or bony spurs. So about it we have already talked, yes? Um, so these were the main principles of amputation. And now we will go to the, some particular questions like um, uh, private cases, like, um, that, yes, uh, like a definite cases of amputations. So we will start with amputation of the upper arm in the middle third by a double flap method. So first we dissect the skin and its fascia in the form of two flaps, anterior one is long and posterior one is short, and separate them from underlying tissues. So at the level of the base of the flaps, we should cross the muscles, and the vitus brachii muscle should be crossed distally to the rest muscle. A little bit more proximally than the place where the bone is to be cut, periosteum is dissected, and slightly push down, and then the bone is sought. And so it is a periosteal method of processing, yes? Ligation of the vessels and nerves of the upper arm is performed, and the edges of the crossed fascia are connected by interrupted sutures and covered by skin. So this is fascioplastic amputation of the upper arm in the middle third. Amputation of the forearm in the lower third in this case, uh, after we dissect soft tissues, of course, we dissect enterosteous septum and treat periosteum and saw the bones. And in children, we have to remember, in children, we should saw radius 1 or 1.5 centimeters proximally to the ulna, because radius grows faster than the ulna, and the ends of the um, dissected muscles are stitched over the bone end. <clears throat> Over the bones uh, and palmar and dorsal facial flaps are connected without muscles, and then we apply stitches on the skin. This is myoplastic amputation. So uh, what I didn't tell you, when we stitch the muscles together, antagonistic muscles, yes, of anterior and posterior group of the forearm, for example, we do not just cover the stump. It is one thing. The other thing is that we have to fix them some, some way, yes? We to slow down their atrophy, because if they have nowhere to attach, uh, they will not be able to contract. If they have a place for attachment, they will contract, and their atrophy will not occur so fast. And if we stitch together antagonistic muscles, they are equalized in their strengths, and the uh, Mm, there is uh, a balance in their work. Yes, that's why we do it. So in case of amputation uh, through the forearm, we also can perform Krukenberg procedure. Um, 
this question is in your exam questions. So uh, Krugenberg procedure, it is a technique that was described by Krugenberg more than 80 years ago. And in, by this procedure, forearm stump converts into a pincer that is motorized by the pronated teres muscle. Like we divide radius and ulna. Like when we studied normal anatomy, we all the time said that movement in humeral radial joint, though it is ball and socket, is impossible uh, due to the firm attachment between radius and ulna, due to the presence of interosseous membrane, yes, and due to the absence of muscles which might cause uh, this movement around sagittal axis, abduction and adduction. In case of Krugenberg procedure, we artificially create such a condition when abduction and adduction between radius and ulna is possible. So we allow by this procedure movement around sagittal axis in humeral radial joint. That's what we are doing, yes? Mm. And is the, in this case, so you can see here, when we can abduct and adduct radius from ulna, we can take this, we can use it you know, as our labor organ. Yes, we can catch something with it, we can put it, you know, we can do many, many things. Certainly, uh, such um, abilities of such a limb are quite limited, but it's better than nothing, yes? So indications for this procedure have been debated. However, they generally include bilateral upper extremity amputations in people who are also blind. So it is not recommended as a primary procedure at the time of amputation. So pronated teres muscle, yes, is the main muscle that uh, provides this movement. Uh, it is uh, described in your textbooks, I think. So please read about it. <clears throat> so amputation of the nail phalanx, uh, it is very common in case of frostbite, for example, yes. So the main principle of amputation of the phalanges of the fingers is that the flap is removed from the, is taken from the palmar side and scar is located on the back. Why do we need it? Because palmar surface is the walking surface, yes? So if scar uh, is on the palmar surface, then there will be problems with this scar. And if it is on the dorsal surface, it, then it will be healed well. So the surgeon grabs, grasps the phalanx to be removed, bends it, and marks the projection of the articular line. And on the planned articular line with the scalpel, uh, we dissect all soft tissues on the back of the finger and we enter the joint cavity with dissection of lateral ligaments. No, and so finally, only this cutaneous flap from the palmar surface is left, yes, and it is stitched uh, to the dorsal surface. Actually, it's very, a very simple procedure. Uh, in case of the amputation of the thumb, Yes, first, first of all, we perform disarticulation of the thumb by Malgain, Joseph Francois Malgain. But we know that actually this movement, opposition and reposition, made our hand to be an organ of labor. And without the thumb, we are unable to perform any significant actions by our hand. We cannot catch, we cannot, no, yes, we cannot grasp, yes, anything without the thumb. And that's why. Uh, phalang phalangization, another surgery, was invented by Albrecht. Albrecht, it is Russian surgeon. So how to perform it? We, ju we are just making a dissection, like we separate uh, the first metacarpal bones from all the other metacarpal bones. And all the muscles of the thinner which were attached to uh, proximal and distal phalanx of the thumb, they are now they now will be attached to the metacarpal bone, and by this way, it will be possible to perform the same actions with metacarpal bone as we performed with the thumb, like abduction, adduction, opposition. Yes, no, like so again. Certainly, it will be limited, but anyway, it will somehow provide some grasping function 
of the hand. So this is phalangization. Like we transform metacarpal bone into a kind of phalanx. Yes, into a kind of phalanges of the thumb. Greatest Stokes amputation. Uh, now we are going to the uh, operations on the lower limb. It is osteoplastic amputation of the thigh. So we are making this amputation in the distal part of the thigh and we dissect femur in the distal part. So we remove condyles of the femur and we dissect patella in the frontal plane, like we remove posterior surface, but we leave anterior surface, yes. And then with this patella, anterior surface of patella, we cover distal part of the thigh. And by this way, like we cover bone stump with another bone and it is osteoplastic amputation. It makes a smooth stump and it, um, facilitates the healing. No, so it's better and uh, such type of stump can even be perform support function, supportive function. So this is gritty Stokes amputation. Another uh, variety, another method, it is osteoplastic amputation of the thigh in the modification of Sabaniev. He suggested to use a supporting part of the stump as a supporting part of the stump, tuberosity of tibia. So in this case, we do not touch patella at all. It stays, yes. We remove condyles of the femur and we remove a tibia and fibula except tuberosity of tibia, so anterior surface, yes. And this anterior surface, we rotate around frontal axis, yes, and we cover distal part of the femur with it. So this is again osteoplastic amputation of the thigh in a modification of Sabaniev. Calander amputation of the thigh is myoplastic and double flap. Uh, the best place for, for amputation of the thigh, it is the border between middle and lower third here. And uh, we create two flaps and the anterior one is longer, and we cover the stump, the bone stump with these muscles and with fascia and fascia cutaneous flap as well, and we stitch it. Yes, here you can see it again. So we remove, again, condyles of femur and patella, so we remove everything that, uh, that is distally, in, in, distally from middle part of the side. The, and we cover it with myoplastic flap. Uh, in case of amputation of the leg, we can use osteoplastic amputation of the leg by Nikolai Ivanovich Pirogov. In this case, on the dorsal, like we use a bone, the part of the bone that is calcaneal tuber. So calcaneal tuber is placed instead of distal epiphysis of tibia. Uh, on the dorsal uh, surface of the foot, a transverse incision of soft tissues is uh, performed from the lower end of the ankle to the lower end of one ankle of one malleolus to the lower end of the other malleolus, revealing the um, ankle joint. The second incision leads from the end of the first incision through the sole perpendicular to its surface to the depth of the heel bone. So two perpendicular to each other incisions. And then we dissect the sole like from the plantar surface of the foot, yes. We remove the entire front part of the foot and we also dissect calcaneus. So we remove uh, anterior part of the calcaneus like body, yes. And we leave calcaneal tuber. Mm -hmm. What? And the cut of the preserved part of the calcaneus means calcaneal tuber. Yes, it is applied to the tibia after the dissection of distal epiphysis of the tibia. So the main advantage of this uh, surgery, it is a formation of a good stump 
with a support on the heel without a noticeable shortening of the length of the limb, which does not require prosthetics. So it does not even require prosthetics, just in case of aesthetic. Just for the aesthetic purpose, we can use a prosthetics. But to support, we can use this stump. Like, the length of the limb does not decrease significantly. That is the main advantage. Symes amputation. Uh, it is disarticulation of the foot with removal of both malleoli, six millimeters proximally to the uh, joint line, to the line of the telecrural joint. So such type of amputation provides an end bearing stump that in many circumstances allows, um, yes, it also allows us to avoid prosthesis over short distances. So it is an excellent amputation for the children in whom it preserves the, uh, the epiphysis of distal end of the tibia and fibula. So this meta-epiphyseal cartilage is saved and growth of the bone is not impaired, yes? So what are we doing? We just remove um, proximal and distal malleoli and that is all. We do not remove meta-epiphyseal growth plate that provides growth of the bone into the lungs. Yes, increases the bone length. Boyd amputation. In a case of Boyd amputation, uh, we need to create an arthrodesis between distal tibia and the tube of calcaneus after talectomy. So we remove talus. Yes, that is located between, that must be located between tibia and calcaneus. We remove talus. And then we connect tibia and calcaneus and we create arthrodesis. What is arthrodesis? It is surgery that is aimed to limit the range of movements in the joint. Actually, we destroy joint at all. There is no joint anymore. We just connect two bones and that is all. Compared to a Symes amputation, it provides more length, larger lengths and better preserves the weight bearing function um, of the foot, yes, of the calcaneus. Chopard's amputation. No, actually, we studied it uh, when we studied normal anatomy. Chopard amputation, it is amputation of the foot by a mid tussel at disarticulation. And so you remember that the key of Chopard's joint it is bifurcated ligament. So the first stage of the surgery, certainly after the dissection of the skin and subcutaneous fatty tissue, first of all, we have to dissect this bifurcated ligament and then we will reach the articular cavity. A least frank amputation. It is amputation of the foot between metatarsus and tarsus. So least frank joint it consists of three joints, yes, you remember, which are located between tarsal, between distal row of tarsal bones and metatarsal bones. One modification of least frank amputation, it is hay amputation. It is also amputation of the foot between metatarsus and tarsus, but it is also um, accompanied by distal resection of the medial cuneiform bone because we see that medial cuneiform bone has the largest length and to avoid formation of such a tuber, we also partially resected to make a smooth stump. Yes, this is hay amputation. Uh, tarsal metatarsal um, amputation of the foot according to sharp it is yes it is uh, transmitter uh, it is amputation through the metatarsal bones we perform a uh, cutaneous incision dissect the soft tissues uh, we dissect metatarsal bones and we stitch the plantar flap to the dorsal surface again suture should be always located, scar should be always located on that surface that does not have a significant load. Yes, it is clear. So the shape of the sole remains. That is the main advantage of the surgery. In case of re removal of the tooth, we can use this dis disarticulation of the tooth by Garangeau. 
Uh, the indication for this surgery is the stroma of all tooth with crushing injury or necrosis due to frostbite. Yes, so the most common indication is frostbite. So just through the metatarsophalangeal joints, we perform disarticulation of the tooth. And again, scar should be located on the dorsal surface. So here you can see it. Uh, what are specific features of amputations in children? So after the amputation, the growth of soft tissues uh, lags behind the growth of bones. That's why for the children, it's recommended to leave an excess of soft tissue. So bones grow faster than soft tissues. And because of the uneven growth of paired bones of amputation, the radial and fibula bones are sought uh, three to four centimeters proximally. So radius is sort th three to four centimeters proximally to the ulna and the same for the fibula because they grow faster. And amputations should be uh, performed through the metaphysis. Uh, sorry, they shouldn't be performed through the metaphysis or diaphysis because of the progressive uh, relative shortening of the residual limb. It is most critical in the femur, but it is applicable to other long bones as well. And everywhere, uh, wherever it is possible, we should prefer disarticulations. Because in case of disarticulations, uh, it completely eliminates the problem of terminal overgrowth and subsequent revision surgery. Yes, yeah, so now let's try. Uh, who should be able to work? What do you mean, Antilafros? I didn't understand you. You mean in in case of disarticulation of the tooth, certainly they will be able. Of course they will be able. Yes. Sure. Because um, you know that there are plantar arches, yes, and points on which we stand, these are not phalanges. We stand on the head of metatarsal bones and on the calcaneal tuber. So certainly they will be able to work. Okay, and now, yes, we have to watch a video. Amputation of the thigh. Операционное поле обработано раствором антисептика и отграничено стерильным операционным бельем. So I will translate everything that is important. For now, nothing is important. Выкроено два полуовальных кожно-фасциальных лоскута по передней и задней поверхности бедра. So now uh, they are creating two uh, fascia cutaneous flap along anterior and posterior surface of the thigh. Выделен сосудистый нервный пучок. где проходит бедренная артерия, вена и бедренный нерв. So here uh, now we can see that surgeon is applying the clamps. мышечный пучок положен зажим. Onto the neurovascular bundle, you see? Yes, now we are on the medial surface of the thigh and uh, yes, in the adductor canal, neurovascular bundle passes that consists нервный пучок пережат зажимами so it's not a ductal canal yet yes it is middle third of the side in the uh, femoral groove femoral anterior femoral sulcus uh, there is this neurovascular bundle 
that consists of femoral artery, femoral vein, and saphenous nerve. Пересечен остро. And it is dissected between two clamps. В кадре хорошо видна склерозированная артерия. So you see the artery, yes, even here. Уходящая часть сосудистого нервного пучка перевязана. So this part goes out, yes, this part will be removed. That's why they ligated uh, all of them together. Because actually there is no need just to stop bleeding for a time, for the time of the surgery. Proximalna sasudista nerny puchok prashit. And here they, uh, from the proximal side, they applied stitching ligatures. Перевязка большой подкожной вены. This uh, is greater saphenous vein. Now they also ligated it. Мышцы бедра пересечены большим ампутационным ножом. So muscles of the side are dissected, yes, by a, by an amputation knife. Бедренная кость обработана распатором. So by means of respator. Uh, the rest of soft tissues is removed from the femur. Мышцы защищены ретрактором. And this is a special uh, retractor that protects uh, proximal um, soft tissues before the during dissection of the bone. Бедренная кость перепилена с помощью пилы джигли. So now they are using jiggly saw. You saw it at our um, museum, yes? And they are sewing the femur. А пил кости обработан напильником. And now by a special instrument they are making the end of the bone smooth. Выполнен гемостаз из пересеченных мышц путем наложения кровоостанавливающих зажимов на отдельные сосуды. So now hemostatic forceps are applied to uh, small vessels. Первый зажим положен на глубокую артерию бедра. Which supplies the muscles. And the first clamp was applied to the uh, deep artery of the thigh. As that instrument to make a um, bone smooth, it is filed. Filed. Мелкие mm мышечные -hmm. артерии перевязаны. So now they ligate. You see, uh, small vessels. 
So large vessels, as you understand, they are ligated with stitching, and small vessels, they are just ligated. And you see, this is bilrose clamps. Yes, they use bilrose clamps. And pay your attention how they cut the end of the thread. Yes, they take scissors, they rotate, so they leave the end of the thread is equal to the um, width of the branch of the scissors. And deep artery of the thigh is ligated with stitching. And because it is more secure, yes, we discussed it. So this is sciatic nerve, yes. So you see, they separated from the other from the other tissues, and so they clamp it because it has a accompanying vessel, yes. So they are moving proximally, you see. And they stitch it also proximally. Выполнена его алкоголизация. Mm, they inject some uh, alcohol into the nerve, actually, it's not compulsory. And so, yes, you see, they took safety razor blade and they dissected the nerve. Control hemostasis. Формирование культи бедра. Наложение кисета вокруг опила бедренной кости. Ну, so now they are performing myoplastic amputation. They are taking... С оставлением резинового выпускника. Mm -hmm. They are taking the muscle and they cover um, bone with this muscle. And suddenly they leave drainage because... So they try to um, perform hemostasis of all the vessels. Some small branches are present and there will be bleeding. And to prevent formation of hematoma, they will, lose, they will leave drainage here. Now you will see it.
Продолжаем формировать культю путем сшивания мышц передней и задней группы Z-образными швами. Ну, so now they will apply um, Z-shaped sutures onto the muscles. So this is, you see, fatty tissue, yes? Mm, like because you saw patient from the very beginning was not very slim. And the uh, size is a place where fat is usually accumulated. Especially posterior surface of the thigh, yes? And so, um, I told you, yes, that our first, maybe I didn't tell uh, all the groups about it, that when you stitch, it doesn't matter what you stitch, you should be sure that you don't leave um, cavities, yes? Because any cavity is a place for um, accumulation of blood first, then this blood will get infected, so there will be abscess, um, and uh, yes, it's better not to leave cavities at all. Everything, there, there must be no space between tissues. So they use here traumatic needles. Yes, you can see it. And how big needles they use. Maybe it's traumatology. Traumatology is not very nice f surgical field mm, like yes if you prefer it then it's good somebody has to be traumatologist So this is gracilis muscle, I guess. 
we also stitch it to a common bulk of tissues. So look, if a surgeon knows location между мышечными швами сформированные культи поставлены дополнительные резиновые выпускники. Now additional drainages are installed. So I want what I wanted to tell you. Uh, if surgeon knows anatomy, if he knows topography of main neurovascular bundles, that it's not even compulsory to apply the tourniquet. If you ligate the main vessels in time, then everything. Края раны обработаны раствором антисептика. So then there will be no such a severe bleeding. This is antisepic. They use uh, iodine solution, I guess. That's why it is yellow. Кожные швы. And now skin sutures are applied. And you uh, look, uh, I also told some of the groups, when you apply skin sutures, oh, it, it's not even... После наложения кожных швов, после операционная рана обработана раствором антисептика. So again, treatment by antiseptic solution. На положена асептическая лейкопластырная повязка. And a septic bandage. So yes, what I wanted to tell you that even after... Um, when you apply skin sutures and not only skin sutures the knots shouldn't be in the wound because if um, knots will be in the wound then there will be ugly scar there will be not a smooth scar okay Okay, so actually we completed uh, today's lecture. Do you have any questions? Along this uh, drainages, oh, so many. Так. So drainage, uh, drainages clot. They um, along them blood will outflow. Like this, it is actually uh, Russian, not Russian, Belarusian video, but in Russia we do the same. Yes, they just prevent closing of the gaps between sutures, and along these gaps blood will outflow. It is just a part of glove. And that is all. It is, uh, yes, this white one, which is inserted inside, it is a part of glove, of um, silicone glove, yes, and it just prevents closing of the gaps, like it prevents sticking 
of the margins of the wound because if it sticks then a cavity will be formed yes and blood will be accumulated and as i told you as a, it will be infected later and to prevent it we need to provide drainage at least for a few days and that's why we apply it and you know shakti uh, i don't see you in the list of the participants. I don't know why. Maybe you like um, switched off like something like hidden regime and I don't know why, but I don't see you in the list of the participants. I don't know why. Okay. So if you have no more questions and you may be free, goodbye no it's not soluble it's not soluble it's glove it will be removed after a few days like after three or four days when we are sure that there is no blood anymore that all the bleeding was stopped even capillary bleeding then it will be removed okay goodbye